I'm Rob Lucuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby here with Sharon Long, Costume Designer for The Great. Um, Sharon, you took over as Costume Designer in Season 2. Uh, yeah. Holly Waddington uh, established the costumes in the pilot and uh, Emma Fry did the remainder of Season 1. So I'm curious, is it particularly challenging uh, coming into a show and further developing the show's look um, in a second season? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I think it's, um, a ch it's both a, a sort of a challenge and I suppose an advantage to having watched it. So you already know the characters. So that's a good thing, but obviously you can't then um, start completely afresh. You do have to um, understand that the audience um, have grown attached to people and the way that they behave and look and, you know, so I kind of had to, sort of carry that on and then expand and hopefully make it my own but you know <laughs> yeah of course because you've got constraints uh obviously with how the show looks in terms of its its costuming um particularly from the pilot uh and you know because this is what these people in the court wear um yeah. and yeah i noticed season two season two seems to have really upped the ante on so many levels uh and in, in the costuming it just feels like there was quite a lot of opportunity for you to really make it your own and put your own stamp on it, which we'll, we'll do a bit of a deeper dive into in a second. Before we do, though, um, you did win earlier this year at the Costume Designers Guild Five Days. Um, that's the first award, I think, for the great um, in terms of its costuming. So you must be immensely proud. No, I am. I am. It was a great surprise. <laughs> but it, yeah, no, I am very much. What's it like to, um, we, 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 did, were you there or you just heard about it while you were in the UK? Like what was that? How, how did that go? I heard about, um, I mean, no, I, I went to the award ceremony actually, because it's the first time I've been nominated for an award. So I thought I'd better go. Wow. <laughs> Couldn't turn that one down. Um, no. so, I, so I went, so it's lovely. Yeah, it was lovely to see, meet so many kind of costume designers who are so brilliant. Oh yeah, there's so much great work about it, and the fact so you 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 went to the effort of turning up to your, your yeah. first ever, and probably for you're going, you're going to get a lot more nominations as the time goes on, and then you won. Um, do you recall the moment when you when it was announced that you had won the category? <laughs> yeah, I do. I was really shocked. I was like right in the middle of the auditorium, so I kind of thought that's I, I can't have won because I'm right in the middle. Nobody would make me walk <laughs> those people to go and get an award, and then uh, they did. Wow. <laughs> and my partner was sat next to me, and he just he went, "You've won, you've won," and I was like, <laughs> get up. rather dazed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, was funny, it was the first one up as well so oh really I hadn't, I hadn't kind of quite got into the ceremony or anything and I hadn't listened to anybody else's speeches oh geez yeah that's <laughs> that's huge what kind of um what kind of consideration and discussion goes into um submitting an episode for award consideration because it was the episode five days or seven days I'm not quite sure what the title of that episode of that episode is um what, what yeah why did you choose that one um, I partly chose it because there's quite, I mean, there's a lot of costume in it. There's a lot of different looks because it takes place over five days. So that showed quite a range. I, there was, uh, it was probably all costume, you know, with one or two exceptions, um, small exceptions. It was probably all costume that um, had been generated in season two. So I felt that was, you know, um fairer to be kind of put yourself forward for something where you actually have done all the costumes <laughs> um and I, I mean i did like the taking um Ka catherine's character through the pre through a pregnancy was quite difficult and when we got to the point where she's fully you know nine months pregnant and can get no bigger um it presented certain challenges and i and i really uh felt that by that time we'd we'd sort of made it work really I like I yeah. really like I really like the way she looked and you know it's quite difficult for an actress to sort of be playing pregnant for so long and I think by that particular episode Elle had sort of gone oh she'd sort of given in to the sort of the pregnancy and was kind of you know really really working it really well I loved it. so I kind of loved that episode yeah. actually 
actually, I and mean, that's one of the opportunities I think was presented to you for season two because Catherine is pregnant. It feels like she's pregnant forever. <laughs> like, <she's just laughs> pregnant. Well, she was actually <laughs> pregnant for nine months. <laughs> that's what I yeah. <laughs> we filmed it in real time, really. You're right. Poor Elle. I mean, that's a that's a that's a lot. Um, and so her the the um the dresses in particular on the great are, are larger than life, generally speaking. But you had to account for the pregnancy and make it very obvious that she was quite heavily pregnant, especially in the later episodes. So what kind of particular um things are you doing um in terms of the silhouette and the actual pieces themselves to account for this pregnancy? Well, at the beginning, and actually, in fact, the first time that she walked on set with the pregnancy, we got um, we bought um, pregnant bumps, which are quite light, you know, that, so she can, you know, be comfortable in them, um, which were different from the prosthetic one. There is a prosthetic one, which is fantastic, which um, Lou, um, hair and makeup designer, designed where, where you can see the pregnancy. But ours were a kind of a lighter thing that, that she wore underneath. And the first one was three months, which is the beginning. When we start off with, she's supposed to be three months pregnant, but actually the first time she went on set, it wasn't big enough because you couldn't see it. So we had to kind of play with all that because there's a sort of, you know, the audience need to know. She couldn't just look a little bit like she'd put some weight on or something. She had to look actually pregnant. And in the end, we moved the bump up but we didn't change the costume. So the first, and I actually really like it now because at first it seemed a bit shocking that she, it was kind of a bit tight. Yeah. But actually I really like that sort of uh, her costumes in the first couple of episodes where she seems like she's almost squeezing out of her clothes because um, it worked yeah. to our advantage, I think. That's um, right. So and that... in fact, she was five months pregnant to nine <laughs> months pregnant, really over nine months because yeah. you never the three months that's right and i think that adds to the comedy of the because this show's outrageous in terms of how funny it can be and when i said when i'm what i meant about her being pregnant for so long is that she i felt like she was heavily pregnant forever and i think that was <laughs> intentional so you could really notice it <laughs> yeah so that you can feel her getting really hot and flustered and you know it's been a yeah. really kind of inconvenient you know, that's right of, <laughs> and that really that really aligns with her character development in season two. Like she's just had it. She's had enough. <laughs> so yeah. it's perfect. Yeah. Anyone I who's know is that um, Paul is stopping her being killed by everybody because she's carrying the heir to the throne. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. But it's it just works like anyone who's been pregnant or been with someone who is has been pregnant understands that whole mentality of just feeling like you've had enough because you've been pregnant. You feel like you've been pregnant forever. Um, now, the, there's some other really great opportunities like Gillian Anderson came on for two episodes and that was such a great highlight for the season. But her dresses, um, you know, we have to remember she, her character, Joanna, is German. And she's, yeah. she's coming to the court and looks down on the Russians like they're just kind of, you know, they're beneath her. And she's got this amazing geometrical silhouette. I felt like she couldn't even walk through the door. And I'm just <laughs> curious to see her. What, what was she the thought process behind her? <laughs> no, she worked that brilliantly. I mean, Julian, Julian's um, very petite. And, uh, I mean, we had she had to take up space, really. So we kind of, I mean, and she was game for it the minute that... I kind of broached it with her that we make her quite a sharp shape um, and that she's bigger. So Elle by this point has become quite round and then Gillian comes in and she's quite spiky. And uh, we actually made panniers that sort of had an, sort of a bit almost an angle on them so that yeah. she did this sharpness. And I think that really, because she looks like she's trying to take up too much room in court. And that's, I mean, and that's kind of what those dresses did. There was lots of complaints by men that women were taking up too much room around the place as the dresses got bigger and bigger. Um, and, you know, her kind of, I mean, I used really strong colours for the same reason, really, so that she's just imposing and she's, she's annoyingly present and taking, you know, sort of taking over. Yeah, that's, I mean, uh... Obviously, we see the costumes and we understand how they look and their aesthetic and we appreciate how beautiful they are. But costume design can also very much empower a person or a character, sorry. And also, um, it, it can give us maybe even subliminally uh, 
an idea about what they're there for in terms of the narrative. I think that's a great point for, for Joanna because she does come in and impose her views on the court because she's better than them and she's larger than life. And I think that I think that's all in the clothing. So I mean, I, yeah, I'm glad that you said that's intentional because I was wondering yeah. whether it, whether it was. Else colors, and then Elle's colours were softening down on in yeah. that episode. They, uh, those two episodes, they kind of go, they're a little bit watered down. The sort of she starts to go into because of their relationship, she starts going to sort of baby colours. Like it's like my mum's coming. What would mum like? And and it's that sort of that eternal kind of you know I'm sure I have it the same with my mum where you become a child when you go home and it doesn't matter what age you are so there she is she's an empress she's pregnant and her mum still makes her feel like she's 12 or something so we were sort of playing with the pale blues and the kind of peachy colours so that she's quite you know uncomfortable and a bit babyish and everything's not quite working properly yeah in yeah absolutely it, it really comes across is it was it just me or, or did you use more florals this season I noticed particularly towards the later half of the season the dresses use a lot of floral pattern and I'm just wondering what's behind that choice um the I think I mean the historical reference there's lots of florals I mean it's kind of a, a very much a mid-18th century thing and there's a lot of uh, something called chin. It's a bit like I cat, but um, where they dye the threads before they weave up the fabric. So you get these kind of really, really beautiful kind of wishy washy sort of flowers. So they don't always have an edge. Um, so, I mean, really just from a personal, I just think they look beautiful and the, and the original dresses are quite patterned. And I did, I did feel that the, first series when she's really really young and she's wearing lots of flat colors that kind of worked for her being really young yeah and then she needs to get more sophisticated really so um you know i would hope that that's her moving on yeah that makes a lot of sense um i i noticed as well that there's quite a lot of use of fur in season two uh there was some in season one but i, I felt like there's a lot uh, Peter and Gregor, they're hunting outfits. Um, Aunt yeah. Elizabeth has these beautiful kind of purpley mauve. I don't know. I'm not really good with colours, but um, yeah, it is uh, <laughs> yeah, beautiful looks. I think Aunt Elizabeth is one of the highlight characters of the whole season, and I just feel like yeah. she really came to the fore with her costuming. Could you talk us through that? Um, well, her eccentricity, you know, just allows um, just a. a allows me to be quite creative I think with with Aunt Elizabeth and um, also Belinda's you know very game for it she's really she's tall she carries things really well so you can kind of do big patterns and strange it you can look at the and where again I, I kind of always prefer and go back to my references so often even when it seems quite strange I have found it somewhere in a painting there's been a painting somewhere in Europe of somebody who's wearing something a little bit like Aunt Elizabeth so that she's not completely, you know, divorced from um, mid 18th century. But yeah. yeah, no, I mean, I kind of looked a lot at sort of, I don't know, Schiaparelli, all sorts of, you know, mm. sort of that kind of um, surreal aspect of fashion that yeah, I think that's... is interesting. And also because she likes sometimes dressing as a man, which was, quite common then it was a sort of a, there was lots of mask mask ball masquerades and they were yeah. very popular fancy dress was really popular so you know I've kind of brought all those elements into her really so you never quite know what she's up to and what she's doing and what she's thinking yeah and it, yeah just like it kind of allows allows a kind of whole range of stuff got some it does good, three mm. <laughs> Yeah, it really adds to her mystique as a character. And and just, I think the, the audience really roots for her um, for some reason. Just, I mean, Belinda plays it beautifully as well. Yeah. The use of the fur, though, um, it's, it's fur is obviously, I mean, real fur is so obviously non-politically correct or politically incorrect, yeah. I should say, but it works so beautifully <clears throat> for that court, particularly Peter 
um, uh, and Paul. Uh, so, and then of course, let's not forget the Ottoman ambassador and the Sultan. They yeah. there was a lot of fur on them, and that that really creepy ear necklace that the Sultan wears. Talk us through the uh, the Ottoman look. <laughs> but they were. I mean, we used fake fur because we sort yeah. of have to. And it, and if there's fur on the crowd or uh, it looks like real fur, it's usually from a costume house, and it's you know it's already a hundred years yeah. old. Or years old or something but I mean I have to say I mean I'm a bit worried about the fate for kind of filling up you know it's not very good for the planet so you've got that yeah. sort of, uh, that dichotomy really yeah real yeah. fur bad for the animals fake fur bad for the planet but um it's Russia and you just have to you know I don't think you could do Russia without fur no, so we can't. kind of try and balance it really so yeah on the on 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 our hero our hero characters we would use f fake fur and yeah. then higher furs for the yeah foxes but, and rabbit and things for the for yeah. the extras from the costume house yeah it just adds it just adds more it adds this texture and uh like authenticity that you really need it um for that particular time period um finally uh there's this one look from the season finale. I, th I think it's the finale or second last episode where Catherine is bawling her eyes out as her mother is buried. Um, the camera pans, pans down to ground level and the background forest is this radiant green and she's wearing this bright red cloak over, this, over her floral dress that we've seen in the couple of episodes prior. Yeah. Um, it is so, it is the best shot of the whole season. I loved it and I'm just curious <laughs> Because the, just the way that it comes up on the screen, what was the thought behind that colour choice? Well, she was, it, funny, it was a kind of, that was a last minute make, actually, because we had, to, but you always, when you kind of read a script on it, you have people doing things indoors and then going out of the palace and doing something. And sometimes they change around, obviously, because of locations or, and I think, something had happened and she was in the rose dress before um going out and crying by her mother's grave but for some reason we hadn't quite i'd imagine that she was going to go out just in the dress but it just wasn't possible i think we'd either got um there was some really rubbish weather conditions or it just didn't suit it so um very last minute we made a cloak for her to rush out. So I would love to say it was completely intentional, but it sort of wasn't. But the the it comes across as red um, on screen, but actually it was the deepest, deepest pink. It was the same as the deepest part of those roses. So it's wow. a, it did look beautiful. And sometimes those things, I, I mean, they are accidental, but her colors are quite good at lending themselves to the outside, you know, countryside so when she, I mean they're because they're beautiful fabrics and often I'm sort of surprised when she goes out and you just they hit the light and you just think oh looks wonderful isn't that, that funny how it's for you yeah isn't that funny how sometimes something that wasn't meant to be ends up really working um yeah, yeah it's it's luck and also you know your experience uh, you've been on the show for nine months already and um uh, yeah, beautiful look there. Final question before I let you go. Um, you know, like, I think this would be really important for the great. I ask this question quite a lot with costume designers. You've got to strike a balance between aesthetic and utility because obviously it's got to look amazing. It's got to be period um, authentic, but it's also got to work on set. And I'm just curious, particularly with these costumes, some of them are massive and intricate. Um, does how they're worn practically inform your choice as much? Um, it does. I mean, I have to make sure that everybody can move and is comfortable in their costumes. And I've got a brilliant um, team of people and makers so that, and, and there's a lot of discussion in the fitting about if, if it'll do the job for the scene. Um, so sometimes the actors are brilliant. They sometimes I think that they won't, you know, I, I'm suggesting something and they go further. Like, um, Nick wearing, I don't know, just a nightshirt and a pair of slippers and a, a sort of virtually a dressing gown in the snow, in the freezing cold, you know, when I would have, when I was offering him up lots of underwear and things and he didn't want to have them. Um, and the size of the dresses, I mean, I think uh, Gillian's were the biggest skirts 
um, and we didn't know whether she would get in and out of a carriage very comfortably, but she loved to dress and she made sure she got in and out of it. So there's part, partly there's where there's a will, there's a way. Um, but I, I try not to be um, with the standbys and everything. I, I want everything to look real. So I really don't mind if people do things in their costumes. So we don't worry too much about the hems of the dresses getting dirty or, because in the end, they'll, the white clean so there's a lot of that where you just have to have faith that it'll look good on camera and work and people can move their arms and yeah. you know, be quite modern in it and the only thing that's different is this big skirt or something yeah absolutely well Sharon congratulations on some beautiful work in season two good luck this award season and thank you for your time today thank you very much it's lovely to speak to you mm -hmm.